Hello everyone, my name is PlatinumRBX and welcome to noob to pro By the end of this video, you are going to be an even better builder than you were last time, hopefully. And, uh, disclaiming, there's no such thing as a bad builder. Like, if you think you're bad at building, you're not. That's just your style of building. Anyways, on to the video. This video is going to teach you how to become an awesome builder with scaled builds, like shaping and things like that. I'm going to give all the tips that I use for myself. So the first step into becoming a professional builder is the scaling tool. The scaling tool costs 5,000 gold, so it's quite an expensive tool, but it is super worth it in the end. So, the scaling tool makes it so that, well, you can scale blocks like this. You can make them flat, tiny, and whatever you want. Now, the next thing is to get a lot of blocks. Unless you're making a very small mech, you're going to need at least, like, 4,000 or 5,000 blocks to make a decently sized mech. Alright, that's enough with all of the things that you will need. Now, to get on to the tips. This is a mech that I am currently working on called Gundam Blitz. And he's going to be finished very soon, but, well, you know, I have a lot to do, but this is an example of a scaled mini block mech. So all the parts on him are scaled and shaped. So the first part is the plating. Plating will make your mech feel alive and it'll make your mech feel like it pops out to each other. So it'll make your mech look th more 3D and more armored. If your mech looks boring and it has a flat piece on it like this, then you can simply add plating. Now, for plating, I usually use wooden things like this. I used it for my Vidar Gundam and like this. So I do that and that and that I don't regularly use this technique but it can make your mech feel more alive in my opinion and I think a lot more people should use it because it's very useful now once you have this you I from my builds I use move 1 rotate 15 and scale point 1 that's just the, my personal settings so I'm going to 1 2 3 and we will do it like this and we'll scale it all the way to the other one. And now we repeat this process until all of them are like that. And now we just put a big part in the middle, like this. And then you have a plate. Now, these parts are sticking out. So what we need to do is we need to make them a very similar color. And once you have it just right, then you should be good to paint all of them. And there you go. Now you have your plating. This is a very good technique, used a lot in my Vidar Gundam, and now on to the next technique. The next technique is circles. A lot of people have trouble with circles, so I'm going to show you how to make a circle. So, I usually make my circles quite big, uh, but you can make it any size you want. So you have to place these blocks all in a circle like this. And let's say if you want a smaller circle or a bigger circle, you just have to scale them in. But let's say I want a small circle. So I'm gonna switch scale to one for now. I'm gonna scale all my circles in about to six, right there. So now we scale all of them like six, to six widths. So I'll see you guys when I've done that. All right, I have made a six circle. So this is how big my circle is gonna be. So make sure you want that. And now I am going to scale them all in like this. If you want to make the circle like thick, then you just scale these in like that. And you scale all them in if you want to make it like not hollow and make it have like, you know, st no giant gaping hole in the middle of it. So I will see you guys when you have, when I actually, I should probably be able to finish this quite quickly. Now, you may realize that there's some spikes on the outside, so we're going to fix that. We're going to get scale 0, and we're going to get each circle piece, and we're going to scale it like this. So we're basically smoothening out the circle right now. It's a very long process, and it can get quite difficult. 
and this needs a lot of practice to do. Hello, Pongs. <laughs> so you usually do that. And your circle will become smooth. And you just repeat that process for the entire thing. So you just smoothen out the circle, and I'll see you guys when I've done that. Just in case you guys were a little bit confused on what I was doing, basically do this. And now we just scale it like that. And we meet that up with that bit, like that. And you scale it like that. And you meet that bit with that bit. And that's how I usually smooth in circles. So now you know how to make circles. And another thing, if you want to make it, you know, not hollow, like I just said, you have to just fill it in like this. And then you've got yourself a thick circle. And that is generally how to make circles. Circles can be very tedious and annoying. But that's generally how I make my circles. Now on to the next and final step of shaping. Alright, so let's say I want to make a Gundam torso. So, I usually get a reference image. So this is my reference image. So let's say I want to make this. So I will put that there. Right there. So that we can see it. So, we need to make this bit first. And the Gundam torso is pointing downwards. So as you can see, it is pointing downwards, like that. And yes, this is a reference image I use for my blitz. So, we point it downward like this. Let me get to 0 0.1, actually. So let's make it like that. Now, as you can see, the torso, it's shaped like a shield kind of thing. So we need to make a shield, so let's make it spike. So it's like that. I'm doing 1, 2 for this part. Actually, yeah, that's right. And now, we need to make it spiky, because it's quite spiky. And now we need to make it an equal length. Like this. And now... The f it comes like that, and then it goes straight like that. So let's get that. One, two, three. Fun fact, the rotation setting 8, 15 has six rotations. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then it returns to normal. So that's a really helpful tip for building. Alright, so now that we have this shape right here, now as you can see, it has the paneling technique, so it goes up and like that, like the thing we I showed you how to do. And we also need to make it a little bit longer, because it seems to be quite long. <laughs> Alright, now we need to add that technique. So, the way I do it is I do this. So, so I do paneling for complex shapes. So now, if we try and do this, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. So that ready? I'm going to do that. Oh no, look. Look, it's all messy and wonky. Oh no, look, it, it looks bad. Look. Oh, what do we do? So here is how to do the paneling technique with complex shapes with the skill tool. So the technique I use is I do this. Go to the edge of this part right here. And we have to rotate the block so that it is similar to the rotation of this one. We scale it in like this. Like this. But now it's even it's 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 still wonky. So this side of it is gone, but we still have this big part that's sticking up. So then I just do it for this for this side too. Is that good? Yes. Let me scale it down like that. Alright. And now, there's just a little tiny little bit of that. Just scale it down a little bit. 
Look how it's still a little tiny bit messy, but look how much better it looks. Look at how much better that looks. Now, if there's a little tiny gap there, we can fix that simply by doing this. Bam, look. Oh, wait. Never mind. Alright. Let's do that. And we get my, our mouse on the end of this bit right here. So, right there. We get the same rotation as that. And there. So, now it it's still kind of messy. But it's a lot better than last time. At least it's not two giant pieces sticking out of each other. And if you still want to clean it up, if it still looks a little too messy for you, you can get one of these. You just kind of stick it in there. It's a little bit hard to get it in the right place, in the right spot. So I get zero, zero move. Hello, Nutcracker. Yeah, do this. Just to get it right. Come on. Oh, that bit's in the way. Come on. I need to do this. Oh, yes. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Hmm, that's a little bit off. But you get the idea. And now, if we paint it black... So is, let's get, actually, if we do a blue, or purple. There you go. So now it looks like it's not sticking out. And it looks very good. And then we just do the paneling technique, and we add the little bit on top. Like this. And we need to do that. And we need to do that. And you've got yourself a panel. Look at that. Look at how clean that looks. So you've got yourself a panel. Great job. So now uh, we've done that part. I'm not going to do the entire torso, obviously. But this part is going out like that. So then we basically just do that. And like that. And so on. So that's basically how I do it. And now, on to the tips, not the tutorials. These are the tips of how to become a good builder. The first tip I'm going to say is patience. Being a good builder takes a lot of time, and the Gundam that I'm making probably ta has taken me 12 or 13 hours so far, so you're going to need a lot of patience. And the second tip is inspiration. Um, so... You can't start off making custom built mechs uh, as soon as possible after you're done watching this video because you need to get inspiration. So maybe get a reference image like this gun. Just get a reference image and just follow the shaping. So, and I have a lot of tutorials. So that's another tip. You need to watch tutorials because you see how I build things and see how I shape things. And that can, you know, you can learn some techniques that I use that I haven't even explained in this video. So thank you so much for watching this video and happy building. I'll see you guys in the next one.